again. I thought I would talk to you today about poison ivy rash because unfortunately my son has poison ivy and I have to take care of it. <laughs> but thankfully I have a lot of things at my disposal and so I thought I'd go over a few things with you. Um, the first thing you want to do is get the oils off. As soon as you know or think that you have been exposed to poison ivy, you want to make sure that you get the oils off and so you want to wash it really good hopefully you just be able to take a shower if not if you're out like camping or whatever hopefully you've taken some dish soap with you and so just use what you have but this is a an eco-friendly dish soap and actually for poison ivy something like dawn might be better because it's it really cuts the grease and this is you know a lot more gentle on the environment so it may not be as effective, but it will still be better than nothing. And you can buy something like this. It's called Technu, and it's specifically for poison oak and poison ivy. And you would use it just like a liquid soap. And like I said, you want to wash as soon as you think that you have been exposed to poison ivy. Um, if you don't realize that you have, and you know, a day later you start itching and you have a rash. Uh, it's almost too late then because you've already got it and you're going to have it for a while probably. Um, but still, go ahead and wash the affected areas. Take a nice shower and the temperature of the water is going to depend on how you are reacting to the poison ivy because some people prefer warm or even hot water and some people swear that that is the worst thing you could do and that cool water helps them. So it really depends on the person as to how they are going to react and what kind of remedies were, are going to work and what type of water, you know, what temperature of water and everything. Because like I said, it might be cool or lukewarm for you or it might be, you know, close to hot might be better for you. Some people say that hot water spreads it and I don't know if that's true or not, but if hot water makes it worse, then obviously you don't need you don't want to use hot water. So that's the first thing you do is clean it. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to take baths quite frequently. And, you know, at least once a day or every other day if you can. And they're going to be special baths. And, you know, a lot of these videos or whatever will tell you one thing to use. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you several things to use. And I want you to use them in combination because I think that more than one thing is better than one thing, definitely. And so the first thing is sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. I have a big bag of Himalayan pink salt and I think it's a really nice salt, but you could use regular sea salt if you wanted. If you're in a pinch and all you have is regular table salt, I'm sure that would probably work as well. It's just that the Himalayan salt and the sea salt are better for you, obviously. And so like the bath I did for my son this morning, I used a half a cup of the Himalayan salt. And then another one you can use is baking soda. And I, of course, would recommend aluminum-free baking soda. And I buy it in bulk. And so that's why I just have this baggie of it because I divvy up some of it so that I don't have to get into the 25-pound bag each time. So this is my aluminum-free uh, baking soda from Bob's Red Mill. And I use about a half a cup of that. And like I said, you can use just one thing in the bath, but if you have more than one of these things, feel free to use a combination of them because it's only going to help if you can get more than one thing in there. So baking soda, salt, and then the other thing is clay. And this can be bentonite clay, which that's what this terra bath is, or terra bath. This is a bentonite clay. It's a very high quality clay. And it's brown. And this is a, this is specifically for bathing. 
Um, but you can get different grades of clay. There's edible clays and uh, clays for masks and stuff like that. But this is this is the internal clay here in this container. But it basically looks the same as what's in this box. And so it's just a really fine powdered clay. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm sorry for the sound quality. I'm sure it sucks again. <laughs> and so I use probably about a quarter to a half a cup of the the Terra bath, which is this, and it comes in a, a bigger bag, so it's less expensive than buying the small containers. But you could also use kaolin clay, and this is just a white Clay. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that or not. So it's a clay as well, but it's very fine milled and it's white. Okay. And so, yeah, about a quarter to half a cup of that. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull out the toxins and draw, uh, dry, dry out the rash because, you know, most of the rashes are like oozing and pussy and stuff like that and you want to dry that up and so the clay plus the salt and the baking soda will all help to draw out the toxins plus uh, dry up the rash and then the other thing I put in there is oatmeal and it can be quick oats it can be whatever kind of oats this one's not open yet I actually used the other canister but what you want to do is take like this tea bag. It's actually quite a bit bigger than a tea bag. A, a regular tea bag is probably about that size. So it's twice as big. And you can fill it about half to three quarters of the way with the oatmeal. And then as you're drawing the bath, you know, you fill it with your oatmeal and then cinch it up. And I tie a knot right there. And then just hang it on the on the little lever in your bathtub so that when the water is running it's running over top of this okay and then what you want to do when the bath is about half full is you want to grab this bag of oatmeal and just start squishing it and you'll see all this milky stuff it's the milk of the oats and you'll see it start to discolor the water and so just keep squishing it around and you'll it'll turn all mushy and yucky and whatever but just keep doing that and get the oat milk out of the oats and then just swirl it around in your bath and then add your clay and the baking soda and the salt and just swirl it around really well and soak into the soak in the bathtub as long as you can and then you can if you want take this after it's softened and everything and just rub it on the areas where you have the poison ivy you know, like a little washcloth almost, and that should help soothe it, okay? And so when you get out of the bath, you want to blot dry. You don't want to rub your skin because that might hurt. So you want to blot dry as well as you can. And make sure you wash all of your clothes and your towels and everything in really hot, soapy water. You might want to add some borax to the wash cycle and some vinegar to the rinse cycle. And then when you get out, you want to apply something topically. Now, aloe, aloe vera gel, sorry, is really good and it's very soothing and I recommend a pure aloe vera gel. You don't want anything with a bunch of preservatives. You don't want green aloe or anything like that. That's not real aloe and you don't need dye or anything like that. So I do recommend finding a really high quality one and just slather that on, you know. You can use it your hands to slather it on, or cotton balls, or whatever. And then I have organic cotton balls, of course, and you can take those and use apple cider vinegar, or even just straight, like, white vinegar, but I would recommend using the Heinz because it's made from grains rather than some of these other ones that are actually made from petroleum. So, But I like apple cider vinegar, the organic that has the leather in it. And so you can dab that on several times a day as needed. Same with the aloe vera gel. This is stored in the refrigerator, by the way. And 
you know, I don't really like pharmaceutical and over-the-counter stuff too much, but calamine lotion actually does really work, so, and it's cheap, and it's widely available. So if this is all you can get, then by all means, buy some calamine lotion and keep it in your medicine cabinet and dab it on with cotton balls. And you want to use fresh cotton balls each time, obviously. You want to throw those away when you're done. Okay, so, you may be a little bit pink, but... It, it really does work, and they also have like a calamine gel, which is clear, um, so it would be more like the aloe, so it'll dry clear and you won't have a bunch of pink spots all over you. But this stuff works, and just apply it as often as you need, and take the baths as often as you can, like once a day if you can, more often if you need to. And then you can also take some homeopathic remedies, like the wrist tox. It's specifically for uh, poison ivy, and it actually works for a lot of people. So you can try that if you'd like. Okay, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.